Welcome to the College Football Bros. I'm Michael Newman. And I'm Trey Newman. All right, on today's episode, we are counting down the top 10 teams in college football, and we're ranking them uh, not based on resume, but based on how good we think they are. So this is not how we would rank them if we were, you know, voters in the AP poll or the committee ranking the playoff teams. This is just kind of, I guess you can think of them as Vegas type power ratings, just how good the teams are moving forward. Um, Let's get started with number 10, Trey. Yeah, number 10, the Ole Miss Rebels. Um, The one thing about Ole Miss, it's kind of odd. You know, we're going into week eight, and we don't truly know how good Ole Miss is. They're 7-0, but of the 10 teams that we have here, they have the worst strength of schedule. The toughest game that they had, they fortunately escaped at home against Kentucky. Now, their schedule does really pick up here, um, so we're going to, you know, we're going to start to uh, learn a lot about them, but but overall, as a team, it looks like this is Lane's best defense he's had at Ole Miss. The rush offense has been strong with Judkins and, and Evans. Still trying to figure out how good Jackson Dart is. Um, he hasn't been asked to do a whole lot, but he does have six picks on the year. So I am I love watching Ole Miss play, and I'm, I'm curious to see how they, they shape up in the next few weeks as the schedule gets tougher. Yeah, they're definitely still a wild card. Uh, number nine on the list is Oregon, and we kind of all wrote them off, I think, after that week one blowout against Georgia, losing, what was it, 49-3, to three, something like that. And since then, though, five wins, four of them blowouts. Bo Nix has been great. And yes, the Georgia game was bad, especially the final score, but Oregon actually had a pretty high success rate in that game offensively. They gained 62% of available yards that game, which is more than anyone has done against Georgia this year. So, you know, they just kind of had some turnovers, struggled in the red zone. Still a very bad game, but I just don't think that score yeah. is is now indicative of the type of team they are. Of course, they're still much worse than Georgia, but I think ninth is is a fine spot for them here. Yep. Number eight, we've got TCU. Uh obviously one of the bigger surprises this year, but I, I think you've got to have them here in this top 10 in, in the past four weeks, they've won the iron skillet at SMU. They destroyed Oklahoma. They won at Kansas when game day was there. And then last week they had a comeback victory against number eight, Oklahoma state. So, you know, when you look at the team, you kind of figured that Sonny Dykes would, <clears throat> would get the offense going, but maybe not quite to this extent, Max Duggan, he didn't start the year, but since he's been put in, he's been remarkable. 20 total touchdowns, one pick, useful on the ground. Quinton Johnston is kind of looking like Kelvin Benjamin from a few years back. Um, the defense was really bad last year, but you know they're not outstanding this year, but they're definitely improved. They're just a fun team to watch, and they're going to be a factor one way or another as we head down the stretch in the Big 12. All right, number seven, say in the same state, we have Texas. And the only bad result for them so far this year is a loss at Texas Tech, but that was without Quinn Ewers. And they actually outgained the Red Raiders by close to three yards per play that game. Turnovers was kind of the big difference in that game. But overall, they've played really well this year on both sides of the ball. Uh, They're seventh or better in every objective power rating that I could find, SP+, Sagarin, FPI, anything. And the betting market is clearly valuing them as a top 10 team because they are this weekend on the road against a pretty good Oklahoma State team and they're favored six and a half. So, uh, yeah, I think you would it would be very tough to, to put them outside the top 10. Yep. Number six, Clemson. Uh, this hasn't been, you know, a completely dominant Clemson team that we, we grew accustomed to, but definitely better than last year's version. Uh, DJ Uyunglele has had a great turnaround, and honestly, I'm kind of happy for him given the flack he got last year. 17 touchdowns, two picks. you know. And, and Clemson now, as they hit this point of the season, they seem like they're playing with a little bit more confidence the last couple weeks. They've got good wins at Wake Forest. They beat NC State when they had Devin Leary. They just last week won at Florida State when they were controlling most of the game. So I'm looking forward to the next couple games. They got number 15 Syrac- or top 15 Syracuse, then at Notre Dame. But they're certainly the team to beat in the ACC right now. Yeah, that offense has bounced back a lot more than I thought it would. So good for them. Number five is Michigan. And the schedule, 
was pretty weak, very weak up till this past weekend. But they had, for the most part, been playing really well. And then this weekend against a top 15 Penn State team just dominated. Um, I thought the scoreboard was, especially in the third quarter, was pretty misleading. Penn State was very lucky to even be in that yeah. game. But Michigan took care of that the rest of the way and ended up pulling away and blowing them out. So, you know, they've got maybe the best O-line in the country, a couple of great running backs, good defense. They're, they're very solid. And I think somewhere in the fourth through sixth range is is where you could have them so fifth makes sense to me all right number four is tennessee and i don't know maybe this might trigger uh, some people as we have them behind <laughs> uh, a team they just beat alabama but keep in mind they did it on their own home field and that's not taking anything away like i was pulling for the ball balls there and like michael outlined at the beginning you know Almost every power rating out there would would agree with us here that that Alabama would be ahead if they if they faced off on a neutral field Alabama would be favored. Now, just in this game alone, like if Alabama makes the field goal with 15 seconds left, the narrative you you, you wouldn't even really bat an eye at this. But I actually personally put them ahead of Alabama because I still saw a team that did what they wanted on offense against what we thought was maybe the best defense in college football. Um, I like how they won a road game at Pitt. They beat their rival Gators. Um, they dominated on the road against a good LSU team, 40-13. to Ho- Hendon Hooker, one of the Heisman favorites. They run the ball well. Like, Heupel has done wonders. Like You can go on and on. But um, you know they still have plenty of chances to, to prove themselves down the road here. Yeah, I mean, maybe they will just, their power rating will keep climbing and climbing as it has thus far throughout the season, and they will, you know, be as good as Alabama uh, as far as a power rating perspective. But but yeah, for right now, we have number three, Alabama. And of course, I was the one that was um, higher on Alabama and slightly lower on Tennessee. And I guess it's just kind of for me, uh, for one, deference to the betting market. If you look at the point spread from that uh, Alabama at Tennessee game, the market was implying that Bama was you know roughly 10 points better. Now we have that result of them playing each other. It was kind of a coin flip game. Tennessee outplayed them by a little bit, uh, so I would move those closer together, but not enough to to bridge that that ten point gap. So that's that's kind of why I have uh, Alabama better. I personally, I know neither of us can can beat the betting market. I'm sure most people viewing cannot. So we tend to have a lot of uh, deference to it. And and Alabama, I mean, they're still Alabama. Bryce Young still played incredible. Yeah, um, I'm sure. I'm sure they'll bounce back and, you know, they're still one of the favorites to obviously win the SEC. They're going to win the West pretty much guaranteed. Although yeah. who knows, maybe I'll miss will upset them, but uh, yeah, we could have a rematch between Alabama and Tennessee. That would be pretty fun. Yes, it would. All right. Well, staying in the SEC, number two, Georgia. Now early in the season, you, you probably had to have Georgia number one as they absolutely annihilated Oregon, as we alluded to earlier and also South Carolina. And it looked like maybe they even improved over last year's title team, which was kind of a scary thought. But recently they had to battle at Missouri. Um, but but overall, no shame, obviously, in the number two spot here. Kirby's defensive system and the talent that he's accumulated, um, despite the NFL exodus on that side, that he's proven that they can still be outstanding there. Offensively, Stetson Bennett it seems to have taken the next step this year. Brock Bowers is one of the best out there. Um, I think the receiving core is starting to get a little bit more healthy. Maybe they can be more of a threat, especially a guy like Adani Mitchell, um, if he comes back 100%. So they're still clearly the team to beat in the East, even though Tennessee will give them a run for their money. Yep. All right, number one, we have the Ohio State Buckeyes. And this is obviously mostly about their offense. It is insane. <laughs> I was looking at uh, Massey Peabody's ratings, and they have kind of offense and defense ratings. So they have Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia's offenses as the second, third, and fourth best in the country. And they have them 18 points better, you know, roughly than an average offense. Ohio State's is 23 points better. So pretty big gap there. And that's without Jackson Smith and Jigba for most of this season. So He's, I think, supposed to potentially be back this weekend, and and they'll have him down the stretch, arguably, you know, the best receiver in the country. So that's a pretty nice addition. Now, of course, their you know defense is is a bit of a question mark, and really, it's not going to be tested maybe until the end of the season against yeah. Michigan. So uh, we still have a lot to learn about their defense, but they've been okay so far. 
Um, okay, how about let's get to, so there's the top 10. Uh, be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments, uh, your, your biggest disagreements, your thoughts, maybe your full top 10 if you want to list that. Uh, but Trey, what was the biggest snub on your personal list? Because the way we did this, we just combined our, our two top. Mm-hmm. But we made top 15s and then kind of combined them. Yeah, mine was UCLA, but I'm really not upset about it. Like when you look at the power ratings, UCLA is one of those teams where they have a wide range when some of them have them in the top 10, some of them more in the lower teens and around 20th, um, just because their strength of schedule hasn't been great and the defense is still a concern. And I don't know about you, Michael, but I had a really difficult time ranking those Pac-12 schools. You got Oregon, yeah. USC, UCLA, um, and maybe even Utah. Like Utah. they all had a case yeah. that you could make to be there. And I just really struggled. I gave the nod to UCLA just because DTR has been outstanding and they had some nice wins against Utah and Washington recently. Yeah, no, I mean, that's totally reasonable. Just to add to your point, I had Utah as my top team that was snubbed here. Yeah, but like, it's... I had the same exact thought. Even between Oregon, Utah, USC, UCLA, I don't think, you know, there's probably, there's definitely less than a Flip touchdown a coin. separating those teams and maybe maybe just a couple points in most cases. So yeah, I I really didn't disagree too much there, but there you have it. There is our top 10 here midway through the season. Again, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to subscribe. If you like college football, give the video a thumbs up. We'd appreciate that. And we will see you next time. You've been watching the college football bros. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube and in your podcast app for college football content all year round. For bonus episodes and access to our Discord chat, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash collegefootballbros. Thanks for watching.